Hello, my astrology friends and family. This is Lada from astrolada.com and today we continue the 2022 astrology marathon with today uh, astrologer Darren from the United States, uh, personally one of my favorite <laughs> per <laughs> human being in the world, not just astrologer, uh, one of the kindest, biggest hearts, and he will cover the sign Taurus. Hello, Darren. Hello, Lana. How are you? I'm excited to have you here. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. I wanted to have the Venus background to represent the ruling planet for Taurus. And the t-shirt. <laughs> and the t-shirt, that's right. <laughs> what was it for you? Was it your sun sign? Or it's my sun sign, yeah. I can feel the Taurian energy calm. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what most people say about me. Yeah, it's my ascendant ruler as well, so I have a lot of emphasis in Taurus. Oh wow! Yes, indeed. <laughs> tell us, take the word. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, this particular year for Taurus, I do think it'll be very much relationship focus and also self focus due to the current. Well, not current, but the transit of Venus and Venus will retrograde soon. And it's going to trine us, you know, trine the ascendant or whatever you choose to look at, sun, moon, or ascendant. I highly recommend ascendant if you were to watch this video the most. That's the primary thing to look at. And um, <clears throat> also the, the nodes will be changing on the axis of Taurus and Scorpio this year. It's going to be some eclipses there, so that'll be interesting. And so I kind of want to start talking about the Venus retrograde, uh, which will be December 21st, I believe, uh, December 21st through January 29th. And so <clears throat> some cultures of astrology believe that retrograde planets could be a good thing, and other cultures of astrology may see it as a negative thing. And I think it's a little bit of both. I would say the negative thing about a planet go retrograding it makes it harder for the nature of that planet to progress and move forward. However, it is closer to the Earth. So you have the Earth, the retrograde planet, and the Sun. So that's why it's closer to the Earth. So it is a benefit. So I could see why some people would take that as a positive. Because you feel, it's kind of like when Venus goes retrograde, love is in the air. But it's moving backwards, so it's more of a time of reflection and eternal things. And, uh, and, and it is moving backwards, so sometimes you're going back into the past, or sometimes a past lover can come back. And I just think it'll be a time to re-evaluate uh, things regarding your love life, or your self-worth, especially in conjunction with Pluto. So I do think it'll be a very deep psychological situation for Taurus people. Well, for everybody, really, mm -hmm. but specifically for Taurus, because it had trying the Ascendant, I think it'll be very much about maybe physical appearance in a positive way or wanting to change things regarding your health and your body because it's trying the Ascendant. Then eventually, as the year goes on, there'll be some interesting eclipses going on there so you mind if i share this screen i want to show the transits for Taurus people okay do you see a screen in front of you yes perfect okay <clears throat> so um venus at the beginning of the year is january First, obviously, Venus will conjunct Pluto in the ninth house. So the ninth house is a house of religion and culture, travel, or your mentors, your gurus. So I do think, um, just in general, I do think Venus conjunct Pluto, there could be um, maybe thoughts about marriage because the ninth house does represent religious ceremonies. Um, some people, some people that I know already are planning weddings and engagements and stuff like that could happen. <clears throat> and also, I do think um, with Venus conjunct Pluto, just in general, I do think there can be secrets revealed because Pluto is a 
is a planet that does reveal secrets like underground, you know, underground taboo subjects, or or even if you all already married, you could be if you if you have a difficult marriage and you happen to be a Taurus or Scorpio ascendant then you could be seeking guidance or counseling and you're divulging your secrets regarding love and relationships. And sometimes uh, scandals can come out. And this is just in general for the whole world, like sexual scandals or predatory behavior could be exposed or revealed. And, uh, and a lot of things from the past too because Venus goes retrograde, so it's always revealing something from the past or or even divulging a secret that you may have, whether you have been sexually abused or something like that, or uh, just anything like that can be exposed or you choose to reveal, and it could be a healing process for uh, Taurus people in general. So that's what I would say for that. And uh, then it's going to uh, eventually conjunct Mars, too. So I do think as time goes on, like, I would say Mars conjuncts Venus in February, like February 14th, like around Valentine's Day. <laughs> you know, those are like sexy times for, <laughs> for people in general. But Mars and Venus conjunction usually brings a lot of passion or a lot of enthusiasm to make things happen and Venus will go direct too. So I do think things will start to move along and move forward as far as uh, your love life goes, or maybe wanting to make moves as far as uh, traveling or having some kind of romantic experience, or if you choose to get married, if you are in a situation of engagement or making some kind of commitment and with Venus and Mars, conjuncting together, trining your ascendant, especially if you're like in the middle of degrees, you, if, if you're like single, you could be on the receiving end of uh, getting some kind of attraction with the opposite sex. And when the North Node being the first house, the North Node tends to magnify or amplify um, however it's going in the chart. So I do think Taurus people will be a lot more notice these days as far as uh getting sexual attraction and uh even feeling good about yourself as far as how you look or your appearance goes and with uranus and rahu there these are very strange unusual futuristic um planets where you may do something that's very unorthodox or unique regarding your body whether it's whether it's weight loss or maybe some tattoo or some haircut that you decide to get that's very different and unusual and you may get sexual attraction because of that however saturn is squaring that so it's kind of like a debbie downer there too so you could be on the receiving end of judgment and criticism and then saturn is in your 10th house so it could be related to a parent or some authoritative figure or you know or maybe in a job setting maybe you get some kind of interesting creative piercing or a tattoo that's on your arms or your face and people like it people th think it makes you look sexy but in the career atmosphere it's like telling you you're not allowed to do that so if you see contradicting stuff in the chart you're going to get contradicting results so you may get a some some action as far as like men or women um but you would also be on the receiving end of somebody telling you, no, you can't do that or shouldn't do that. It's kind of like uh, a teenage girl who has a boyfriend and the father is telling the daughter, no, you can't go out with that boy, but you still get that positive reaction from the opposite sex. So that's mm -hmm. what comes to mind when I see this kind of transit happening simultaneously. Yeah, so getting will be excited, but your grandma will be horrified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like maybe a parent is like, oh my God, or maybe a young Taurus person who's a teenager, like maybe you have a daughter who's a Taurus ascendant and she's developing and she's getting male attention, and the father's like, Oh my god, that's my daughter. No, stop, you know. <laughs> it can be something like that. <laughs> and also if your son 
uh, in Taurus and also ascendant because the first house uh, is your actions. So you might also undertake some unusual actions that are not normal for you, like Rahu, Uranus day in the first house next year, you'd be more motivated to certain actions to try to take risky actions, both Uranus yeah. and risky, but you'll be criticized and you might receive some opposition by the Saturn energy, which mm -hmm. is you know, an authority figure or a parental figure or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So not just appearance. It might be like, oh, I want to start this job, whatever, you know, if it's your son, especially, or this problem. Mm -hmm undertake change my life new beginning in my life with rock or something risky something <coughs> crazy and, and there'll be this push and pull but still i think uranus and the rahu are quite strong there <laughs> you still yeah, they're very <laughs> strong i think these planets are definitely going to take taurus people out of their comfort zone because normally taurus is very practical reliable and stable and yet they will be forced to do unusual unpredictable things which is very much out of taurus's character or they may make changes that could be somewhat uh beneficial to taurus where it's new but it's still okay for taurus like the way we make money or the way in in this case, we're talking about the ascendant, so it could be mostly about health and body. We even have any planet in Taurus or just the atmosphere in general in the world, you may see changes regarding how we make money or could be things where, you know, going on with cryptocurrency or transactions or things being less hands-on with money, like the way we deal with money, we're probably a lot more electronic these days. Mm -hmm. And I do think that's definitely going to happen when Uranus and Rahu conjunct, which will be in August. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be, yeah, July 31st, almost August. That's when the exact conjunction comes. So I do think there'll be very strange, unusual ways of how we deal with managed money. And I do think it'll be a lot less hands-on, especially with this whole pandemic thing and most people are looking for ways to work at home anyway and i do think it'll be frustrating for the common people because it's squaring saturn which represents the you know an aquarius so it does represent you know the common person or large groups of people um so it is going to be an uncomfortable new situation and it's been like that for the past year anyway like this tug of war of saturn and uranus where uncomfortable changes are happening mm -hmm. that's not traditional so it feels like in general everybody will be taken out of their comfort zone as far as how we deal with money and make money and stuff like that but the venus but i do feel like the saving grace is the venus retrograde because it's trining taurus so to me this goes back to reevaluating our self-worth and also taking on jobs where we feel appreciated is in terms of how much money that we make because i do notice a lot of things people are not tolerating taking low-paying jobs anymore mm -hmm. people are starting to see their self-worth more it's like hey i this is this is what i do for a living i demand a higher pay grade or hourly pay and people are just not settling to work for a job like it seems like companies are like desperate to hire even in my own job they're like so desperate to hire and they keep on giving us races to make us stay there and so i do think that'll be a huge theme and with the saturn square it's going to be like we need more that's not enough because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rahu does make things go more upward more amplifying things are getting more expensive and you know it just seems like the prices of just anything and everything around you just keeps on getting higher and higher and higher but at the same time people are not willing to work for a for a low pay rate mm -hmm. too so i feel like that's the constant back and forth it's like we will work for you but we need a higher pay rate yes because life is expensive <laughs> everything who will raise the self-worth of people in taurus there like, yeah like, definitely so in a way i like that like people are not um standing for these minimum wage jobs it's like you know i need more than that i'm 
I'm worthy of more. And then when this Venus retrograde happens, I do feel like most people will internally go within and say, I deserve more. I deserve to be paid more. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to have um, Venusian things on a more practical sense because Capricorn is very practical and likes for things to be useful. And, you know, just having some financial security and financial stability. And Taurus people, I think, will benefit from that the most. So it does seem like there's some positive things regarding money and finance for Taurus people in general. And then we'll have the ingress of Jupiter in their 11th house. So I think that'll be awesome too, because Jupiter will be in good dignity, will be in its own sign. And that is going to happen December 28th. So a lot of things are happening at the very end of the year in the beginning of this year. So it does seem like a lot more positive things for Taurus people in general. Um, then I would say, and then Venus will finally um, go out of Capricorn in March, March 5th. So finally it'll, it'll go into Aquarius. And then in April, Jupiter will conjunct to Neptune, which may be a good or bad thing. Um, some of the notes that I have for Jupiter-Neptune conjunctions is that I'm going to lean towards more of the positive side because Jupiter is in its own sign. So 11th house is also a house of gains in your network circle. So this is more of like a situation of uh, coming to a group of friends um, with the same goal as far as uh, wanting to make money or making in Jupiter is also a planet of uh, generosity. So like you may have some friends that be very generous when it comes to their, um, or just being generous with their gains or um, anything regarding knowledge and wisdom. So whenever I see Jupiter and Neptune conjunctions, I always think like big dreams, big fantasies, big ideals, and also um, escapism as well, or being amongst people who like to, you know, chill out, relax, or smoke a joint every now and then, just escaping reality. <laughs> so they can be, uh, so this is, I would say, it's more of like a charitable energy, you know, where the, you would be a lot more compassionate to your friends or just society in general but the only thing about neptune is that it could also give you that too good to be true feeling or some kind of deception there so i would still be careful of this energy don't believe everything that you hear regarding any new friends that you may get especially if it's money related so you want to be careful because sometimes you bird neptune conjunctions there could be uh deceptions or misunderstandings in terms of money or borrowing or lending stuff like that like the big banks and corporations and stuff like that so um but it is a charitable energy where you could be making charitable impulses but it could be misguided as well or being misled into certain beliefs or uh you know or being deceptive when it comes to sharing knowledge and wisdom or things may not appear, they may not appear what they seem to be. So it'll be quite mystical, and mystical experiences with friendships or any type of groups of friends that you may have. And Jupiter and Neptune conjunction could also take you to a higher plane of consciousness. So yeah, you could just be experiencing, having extremely spiritual experiences. Um, in regards with your uh, friendships or or even coming across people who have uh, intuitions regarding finances or the stock market or anything regarding accumulating wealth or money. Uh, I also want to talk about, um, let's see, the next thing I want to talk about is Mars Gemini, because it's going to be there for a long, long time. And then I want to talk about the eclipses. So Mars and Gemini 
is going to, Mars is going to ingress in Gemini on August 21st. So let me fast forward to August 21st. Yeah, so it's going to be there. Mars is going to be in Gemini from March 21st to March 26th. So it's going to, you know, impact your second house for the next August through seven months. So it's going to be there for a long, long time. Six, seven months. So this is probably the only transit that I'm a little nervous about because when Mars goes into the second house, there could be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it, you could be um, making knee-jerk impulsive decisions regarding money or savings. Um, it is going to eventually try and Saturn, so that could really stabilize the energy of Mars, where you could be really, really focused and have this militant attitude when it comes to hoarding and saving and making money, making money, saving money. Um, the only alarming thing is the Neptune square and the fact that it's going to retrograde. So that retrograde is going to happen on Halloween, October 31st. So it'll square Neptune, as you can see, October 7th. And then you're going to, that energy is a little worrisome for me personally. Um, I think because you can get into huge misunderstandings with a Mars square Neptune or experience some passive aggressive energy because um, Mars does represent anger and aggression and Neptune is deception and confusion and illusion. So it's very, very easy to fall into a misunderstanding and it definitely could be finance related because they they are in the financial houses two and eleven so just be careful not to make any impulsive decisions regarding making money or spending money or too much dealings with a friend or family member with making money making money schemes trading anything like that or borrowing you know just be cautious in that area just think about the time when venus went retrograde in your second house even though that planet is different it was venus is about love and relationship just i would compare that time to this time coming up where venus is a lot more pleasant where people are more susceptible to fall in love with people that they shouldn't and in this case because it's mars you don't want to get into a verbal altercation and then regret it later so try not to be upset about something. Try not to fall into misunderstandings. Um, just kind of think before you speak, I would say. That would be my advice. Or think before you act on something. Um, and always keep in mind that if it feels too good to be true, then it probably is too good to be true. Because Jupiter will go into Aries and then retrograde back into Pisces. So that planet is also going to square mars so definitely be cautious of not being overly enthusiastic about um anything finance related so don't be too impulsive <laughs> is what i would say because jupiter can have a tendency to over exaggerate or make it sound too great you know, when it really isn't. And then Mars is going to retrograde. So if there are some kind of misunderstandings there or um, or if you notice something uh, kind of shady or deceptive, you may get very, very upset and angry, you know, because it is Mars that we're talking about. So, um, so I would just be, I would just keep my eyes open and be careful around those dates, like October, November, stuff like that. So that's pretty much me glossing over the whole year. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are the eclipses, and then I'll end it from there. So um, we're going to have a partial eclipse in on the axis of your 
Oh, th this was the November one, sorry. We're gonna have a solar partial eclipse April 30th in your first house. So when new moons come to, when it's a new moon, solar eclipse, then that usually indicates new beginnings or initiating something. Something is kind of getting started or brewing. Could be something related to your body, your health or something like that. And also with the North Node being your first house, because it's a magnifying energy, you, you'll you get a lot of attention and attraction because Uranus and Rahu can be related to technology or even the internet. You could possibly go viral about something, something that you do, some action that you take. You know, you could, that usually seems to happen when the, when the nodes when the when the north node specifically goes in the first house they wind up being on the internet or they go viral and i always make a joke with josie because when the north node went in my first house that's when i joined your channel a lot i don't know if you know that but my first day on my first youtube channel youtube video was with you when the nodes was on my ascendant and then when jo Josie joined your channel, the North Node was in her first house. Oh. And we both had the same reaction from your audience where it was like a huge load of clients because you're the magnet, you're the attraction. And that's what Rahu does, it amplifies you. First house is you. And so we share that in common, you know, how, how when the eclipses went in our first house, that's when we joined your channel wow yeah so they'll be visible in some way that yeah track the attention <laughs> yeah so it does magnify you and rahu is an strange unusual planet so who knows maybe the next astrology you get will be a taurus ascendant <laughs> 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 so maybe something like that could happen especially with uranus there you'll definitely be electric <laughs> yeah which is so weird for a Taurus, you know, because they're so stable and mellow and calm. So for them to be elect electrified is weird to see. Electrified from time to time. So yeah, so if there's any Tauruses out there, you will be getting a lot of attention, especially if you do anything new or extraordinary regarding your appearance or some kind of change. And uh, the, the dispositor of the solar eclipse, this particular solar eclipse is Venus. It'll conjunct Neptune and Jupiter and Pisces. So this can be a thing about communities, knowledge and wisdom or uh, people that you share things in common with, you know, your network circles, like-minded people, or maybe the way you wanna make money is the same as somebody else's. So you join a group, you join a team, you could be an astrologer, you know, Jupiter does rule your eighth house. So Venus will conjunct Jupiter. So you may be joining some kind of clique or group that believe that has that same belief or same interests. And you get recognized for that, or you join that type of group. And uh, the next one, this is a, this is the lunar eclipse. So this can be relationship focus now this one is not so great because um the south node is conjunct the moon in your seventh house and it's squaring saturn so saturn squaring the moon this saturn is squaring the lunar eclipse so keep in mind that the nodes don't necessarily protrude out aspects because they're uh, mathematical points in the sky they're not really planets so it's really the planet aspecting the node, not the node aspecting the planet. So the node's on the receiving end of the aspects. So Saturn could actually suppress the energies of the nodes here. So it may not be as extreme. And if it is extreme, it may be even kind of painful or facing some kind of rejection. And it could be either client related or business related or relationship. And it could potentially hurt, it's, you know, you may not even have planets there, so you may not necessarily feel it intensely unless your ascendant and descendant is pretty close to these degrees. But the South Node can represent 
things that are kind of ending or releasing some kind of way. And that can be a potential sad moment, but at the same time, it can also feel like we were meant to part ways or something like that. So it could potentially be some kind of separation, but you could also, it could also be something where you would feel like I need to focus on myself anyways. So it's, it's like temporary pain, temporary hurt. Um, but, it'll, but it'll also let you know that, you know, this could be a time to focus on you yourself and your goals and your dreams and your aspirations. So, and then the next one, um, all right. So this one is interesting too, because the solar eclipse is in your seventh house conjunct Venus. So this can be indicated of like a new loving relationship and it is conjunct the south node. So it could be something where you would be, um, let me think, uh, K2 is more about decrease and deflation or something related to the past or past experiences. Um, and also escapism or spiritualism in a very intense way. So it can be new beginning relationships. If you're single, you know, it could be new relationships that occur, especially if your descent is, is in the early degrees. Um, new loving relationship that leans more towards the spiritual aspects of relationship. Maybe somebody who carries scorpionic traits and it is the South Node there, so maybe not intense in the sense of like extroversion just more intimate more about feelings and scorpio has a lot of spiritual depth so someone with a lot of depth and who you know just kind of has a lot of um i don't know the right word but just someone who has a lot of depth to them or relationships where um Scorpio does have like a serious tone to it. So it's not like a frivolous, lighthearted relationship. It's going to be really deep, spiritual, and passionate. So it could be new beginnings in terms of love happening there. Um, or if, you, if you're if you already in a relationship, then maybe there could be new approaches regarding your marriage or relationship. You know, maybe... If you're already in a relationship, maybe things could be more uh, uh, loving and endearing because it's Venus that we're talking about. Okay, the next one, and this is the last eclipse in 2022. This is a lunar eclipse, so it does seem like you could be very emotional because full moons always make people really emotional and it is on your ascendant, so conjunct Uranus and Rahu. So you may be just feeling really intensely emotional around these days. And uh, with the North Node and Uranus there, it'll be like really raw and authentic, whatever kind of feelings that you may have regarding yourself or regarding others. And Saturn is squaring it. So um, you may be on the receiving end of criticism and judgment for how you feel. But Rahu and Uranus do give that energy of, I don't give a you know what. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't care if you think I'm being too sensitive. This is how I feel. And you're going to have those passionate feelings about something regarding yourself or whatever your whatever journey you're on or the dynamics of your relationships with other people, whether it's friendship or a business partner or a marriage, a partner, or anything like that. So this will be towards the end of the year. So the beginning of the year, I would say, seems like really smooth and good, and things kind of get a little rocky towards the end and intense. Um, but overall, I would say it's a, I would say it's, it was, I would call it an interesting year. I'm, I don't want to put it in the box of good or bad. I would say a really interesting year for Taurus people, especially on the subject of money and relationships, which is like the main theme of Taurus anyway, because it's ruled by Venus. It's relationship oriented, love oriented, money oriented, it's materialism. So 
the stereotype of Taurus is just going to be so ramped up and amplified and the subject will really be about those things. Very typical Taurus Venus topics for Taurus ascendants this year. So that's how I would generalize the whole year. Well, thank you so much, Darren. <laughs> I have thank a you. Taurus at home. My husband is Taurus Moon, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's get, getting eclipsed. It got eclipsed once now, and I got very sick for a month. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I kind of went a bit, <laughs> you know, finally oh, wow. a bit. But uh, it's going to get eclipsed again. But uh, I'm hoping. I, I really like the prediction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I do think there's some positive things regarding money. But towards the end, you know, there may be a potential scuffle regarding finances, but I still think still think people will be financially good, you know, just maybe some frustration there when Mars goes into Gemini. Yeah. Um, maybe with their savings, where they invest them and put them, but they will be making money because Jupiter is in the 11th, removing yeah. the gain, the cash. Right. Wow, the savings, something, they have to be more careful the second part of the year not to have losses get calmed and... Impulsive. Yeah, just be careful of like maybe putting it out there that you made a huge amount of money or gains and and then or you may find yourself spending it too abruptly or too quickly because some idea that a friend gave you because it is going to be that square of your 11th and second. So just be mindful of that like, oh, I hear you make a lot of money. Maybe you can invest into my business and, you know, because the nose are on the first and seventh house. So it is going to be not it's not always relationship oriented it could be business related too so you may you know feel that vibe of yeah collaborate with me team up with me spend money on this and that and then it falls apart and then you get upset so just be careful if you come across a situation like that if you're the Taurus ascendant yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much darren yeah. if anyone would like a reading with darren uh, he's offering one special promotional reading, answer to one question, basically focused on love, not compatibility, but when will I marry, what kind of partner, what is the problem, why do I not have easy relationships or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's offering it just for the next couple of weeks at a discounted price, Zoom call. Uh, so if you're interested to connect with Darren, <laughs> well, he's available because he's quite busy all the time. <laughs> Work, demand on him. Saturn yeah. in the 10th house from your son now. <laughs> yeah, that Saturn Uranus is killing me. I, I can't stand that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy one. Wow. And yeah. Well, thank you so much, Darren. Have a great 2022. And okay. Soon again, by the way, Darren has a great course on um, combinations of yoga for wealth, for poverty, for fame. Uh, this is when certain planets are combined. Uh, mm -hmm. are wealthy, are you going to be famous and so on? It's a fascinating course. You can check it out. I'll put the link below for it. It's a two-day course. It's finished already, but it's a recording. Yeah. So you can check it out as well. So thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. And, and thank you too. Thank you everyone for joining us. Bye-bye.